Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Yejia and today we are going to be reviewing everything that I designed and crocheted in 2023. As you can see, it is in a big heap behind me here. If you're new to this channel, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, please comment down below what you guys are excited for in 2024 and what projects you guys have lined up in 2024. I would love to know. But anyways, let's get started reviewing everything. I'm gonna try to go in like chronological order as best as I can, so hopefully I I have everything that I made here. I made a big cross-country move back in July, no, August, so like uh, everything is still a little frenzied, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but yeah, let's get started. Okay, to start off the year, I was really, really in my Centro knitting machine era, and honestly, I really love that thing, but it kind of broke <laughs> during my cross-country move, and I'm like, I kind of want to get another one, but on the other hand, it's like, it was pretty cheap in all honesty, like the quality wasn't super great, so I don't know if I want to invest another like 50 to 70 bucks on another one, but it did create like really quick projects that are really, really cute, including this first off the shoulder sweater top that I created. Originally in my video, I had a like pink line or like a pink uh, hem seam thing here um and i took it off just because i didn't actually really like how the pink looked with the rest of the top and i much prefer just like a regular gray off the shoulder top and honestly this i'm so glad that i took this out of storage at this point because i'm like oh this is super cute like i'm gonna start wearing this again but yeah i honestly I don't know, now that I'm like talking about it, I kind of want to get another Centro knitting machine. <laughs> Just because like this was so fast and easy to make, especially as a beginner. Like if you don't know how to knit, you don't know how to crochet, I felt like this was like my first real foray into creating and designing my own clothes. And um, this was genuinely just like, I don't know, like one, two, three, four, five, six, six panels, I think from what I remember. And I think that this top definitely started my obsession with off the shoulder tops this year. I really figured out that I like love this silhouette on myself personally. And so many of my designs incorporate the off the shoulder thing. But yeah, this is the first little make of the year. Okay, next we have this two piece set that I created, which is like this tube top and then like a bolero shrug sort of a deal and then like i also really liked this design because i am i made a neck hole but then you can also like wear it behind and just like wear it without this front piece <laughs> up here if that makes sense and again honestly it really wasn't like a difficult design it was mostly just like panels and then like i created this using the tube setting on the central knitting machine it was super fast and quick to work up but i think the Oh, hi Ted. I think I definitely said something to the effect of like I'll try to make like a hand knit version or like a crochet version and I definitely didn't work on that <laughs> but <laughs> I'll start working on it maybe probably I don't know I I feel like the way that I like to design and crochet is very much like whenever inspiration hits me I'm like okay I have to strike while the inspiration is there and then sometimes I'm like oh yeah I'll totally do this thing and then I'm like oh I no longer have the motivation to do something so not gonna do that also so I've I've worn this set out like multiple times to different places but then I wore it out to an art battle in Seattle Center it was a bunch of artists like competing like they had like a set amount of time to like paint and then like everybody was like circling and walking around the artists who were like painting and doing all that. And as I was walking around with my friends, my sleeve actually got caught in somebody's backpack, which was so sad because it kind of unraveled here. Yeah, so the top definitely started unraveling a little bit just cause it like got caught on somebody's backpack, like on the zipper. But I've kind of embraced it, honestly. I kind of like it that way. And I think it was so funny because on my TikTok, somebody was like, oh, this is so goblin core. And I thought that was the funniest thing in the world. I was like, I'm embracing it. This is, yes, this is Goblin Core. So I'm gonna take a screenshot, post it on Pinterest and be like, hashtag Goblin Core. And I feel like the unraveling of the yarn here just adds to the Goblin Core effect. Surprise, surprise to no one. This is another Centro Knitting Machine project. I honestly feel like I really kind of got started designing um, my garments via Centro Knitting Machine because I felt like it was just a lot more I don't know it was like easier and like a little bit more accessible and i feel like by doing so it led me to really understand like garment construction a little bit better 
Another thing too that really helped was like during this time I was thrifting um, some of my yarn and I would like thrift sweaters and I would unravel the sweater just so that I could study like the construction of the actual sweater and then actually reuse that yarn. But yeah, honestly, this is a really cute little, little project. This, okay, when I first started designing and making my own clothes, I did not really pay too much mind to like fiber composition of the specific yarns that I was using. Um, but I think I've learned a little bit more as I've you know, progress. The reason why I don't wear this tube top out as much as I would like to because I do really like the design of it. The reason why is because I used a mohair yarn like for the bodice portion right here. It feels really great against the skin, but it's just, it's a little bit too warm to wear in the, like there's a very specific weather <laughs> that would have to be present for me to like be able to actually wear this without either overheating or freezing my ass off but <laughs> the other problem too is that it's like a tube top so then like it's obviously gonna be a little cold um but i used mohair and like that like i think it gave a really pretty effect don't get me wrong but it's just not a top that i necessarily gravitate towards i will rock like the wrong piece of clothing for the wrong season you know but like this tube top it genuinely just doesn't make any sense <laughs> So yeah, like some reflections, lessons learned, you know? There's gonna be quite a few of those in this pile. <laughs> she is kind of cute though. I mean, I also made it because like I really like it when my clothes, like I specifically when I design clothes, like to design it so that they're like multi-purpose or like I can wear them in multiple different ways. And so with the way that I specifically made this top, I made it so that you can wear it in like very a variety of ways like if you can go check out the different ways that I styled it in that video but like I made it a tube top I made it a halter I made it so that this like little um cinched in portion on my bust was like a bow and then also a rose and things like that this top was like one of my I think it was my first crocheted project that I had like designed, I'd worked on, and I honestly really loved it. I loved how the sleeves looked on this project, and I loved the bust area that I did as well. Um, sorry, I have a mirror behind you guys right now, which is why I'm like... I worked on this sleeve, like trying to figure out how to increase it for so long, but I think I did really well. I think I, I honestly really love the sleeve detail on this top, and I do really love the cinched in bust, and I love this color on me. However, I do not gravitate towards this top anymore because of the way that I designed this bottom portion. It's like bandana, triangle, and the thing is, is like on camera, it looks cute. Like you can take good, cute photos in this top. It looks cute. But in real life, <laughs> just wearing it, like I just felt like this little like flap, a little, a little awkward, a little weird. <laughs> but you know, we live and we learn. But honestly, my very favorite part about this top, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, for sure. There are definitely some mistakes that I learned from designing and crocheting this top, um, particularly with the little flappy flap, but looking back i really a like this color on me and b i love these little cap sleeves i feel like they're so flattering on me um so yeah honestly i'm probably gonna have to like incorporate these sleeves like the sleeve idea again somewhere else because i really like it but i just don't like this little flap that i made Ugh, i don't know maybe i'll just like unravel this specific part and then like just create just a bottom panel there this is definitely one of my very favorite projects that I've ever created. I absolutely adore this because, okay, let me tell you like the design process. Let me just like nerd out about this for a little bit because I had originally created that off the shoulder gray top using the central knitting machine. And that was when I really started to like understand how to utilize panels in order to develop and construct garments. And so when I made that, I was like, I feel like I can crochet this. I feel like I can crochet this. I researched and tested and sampled like very different like ribbing, crochet ribbing techniques in order to get a ribbed technique that looks like a knit 
look like and um additionally i was like you know i've already created an off the shoulder sweater i want to design another one because like i love this silhouette but i want to design another one that has slightly different little details throughout the top and for me that was making it so that it's a reversible design and so the reason why it's a reversible design is that in the back slash front whichever way you want to wear it i actually created it so there's like a sweetheart neckline that kind of dips down here and then the off the shoulder panel comes together in a little bow at this point i was also like beginning my bow obsession like love 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 bows <laughs> and i was like i really want to create like a feminine detail here i want to make it like really dainty and so i also like again i really like having things that are reversible that things that like have multi purpose of wearing them and like layering them differently and, and so i made sure to include that design where it had this sweetheart neckline that was like a little peekaboo moment when you have the bow tied right here and yeah honestly this is like genuinely one of my favorite sweaters i wear her maybe a little bit too much usually when i develop and design my garments i don't necessarily like making multiple copies of them just because it's like okay i have like project ADHD is like what I always call it and I'm like I gotta move on to the next one I want to design I want to create like I love addressing like technical questions and technical issues and solving them when it comes to crocheting and like that's probably because of like my engineering background I can't help it I just really love designing and like figuring out different ways to create things um so usually I don't like to repeat my patterns and like create the same ones over and over and over again but for this top i think honestly i received an early christmas gift from my partner that is like a very special type of yarn i'll tell you more about it later but i think i might use that to recreate this sweater using that yarn i don't know still kind of think about it but i love her she's my favorite honestly and i have absolutely so so love every single one of you that have recreated this tutorial and tagged me and posted your content like i love 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 seeing your recreations it makes me genuinely so happy and it makes me feel like oh my gosh i'm doing something right <laughs> the next couple of tops were definitely inspired very heavily by twice so i recreated one of momo's looks from the set me free era and honestly she's pretty cute i'm not gonna lie like looking back on it at first when I created it, I didn't love it very much, but I was really proud of myself for like, um, because Momo's top originally was knit, and you could tell that it was knit, and but I utilized a crochet ribbing technique that mimics knit stitches pretty well, and so I really liked how it turned out. But I'm pretty sure that in that video, I showed you guys my favorite method on softening up acrylic yarn to use in wearables. Um, just because I know that acrylic can be kind of stiff and like it depends on the acrylic yarn that you get but I also understand that acrylic yarn tends to be one of the more accessible price point wise and so I did try to teach you guys one of my favorite ways on how to soften up acrylics but it's a little bit easier on the skin it's not as like scratchy so yeah honestly feeling feeling this many months later she is still very very soft very very nice and honestly, I really kind of like the design. It's just a little weird <laughs> because like this makes it so hot, but then I'm cold here. It's very much a K-pop outfit. It's a very K-pop outfit. And if you know, you know. <laughs> this is also another twice set me free. This is honestly what like started off me like creating this as well as Momo's top it was because I saw in their like teaser photos that were dropping for set me free that nyan was wearing this blue crocheted top and like i didn't know what the back looked like but somebody corrected me um in my tutorial video where i like was just like i don't know what the ba like back looks like and so i just did a corset back detail apparently the back was buttoned so yeah but i was so so proud of myself for being able to figure out how this neck piece and the waist piece connected because i was really stumped on that for a while but when i saw nyan's like looks from the set me free era i was like oh 
I have to make it like I have to recreate it and I also tried to find who the original designer of that top was and I had no luck so like if you guys know please let me know because I would love to you know credit the original designer of the top because I think it's just so pretty again it's like very um k-pop <laughs> in the way that like this is such a, like a stage outfit like I don't know where I would realistically wear this to besides like a k-pop stage or I did actually wear this to twice when they came to Seattle okay technically they were at the Tacoma Dome like they were within the aroma of Tacoma, you know? And I felt so bad because the whole concert, the girlies were like, oh my God, thank you Seattle for having us. And I was like, this is not Seattle, <laughs> this is Tacoma. I had such a good time at that concert. I had a really good time in this top. Um, unfortunately, Naya did not notice me, but you know. <laughs> but yeah, I had a really good time at the concert and everybody that I that like saw my top situation, everyone was complimenting me. They were like, oh my God, did you make that? And I was like, yes, yes I did. <laughs> so yeah, definitely had a lot of really good fun memories in this top. I really loved creating it and yeah. Okay, the next top that I recreated was Jenny's from their tour that they went on this year. I unfortunately did not go to that one, <laughs> but I did recreate the white version of the fruit top that she was rocking in, I think her solo stage. Um, and I loved, I love, love, love this top. I did actually find the original designer and I credited them in the description box when I made a tutorial for this specific top. Um, but the thing is, is that the bottom trim right here on the original top was knitted. It was like a hybrid crochet knit top. So I remember when I was trying to recreate this top, I was really struggling with the lacy portion on the bottom hem of the top because I was like, I don't want to like have to knit that. And also like, I don't even know how I would knit that honestly. And <laughs> I was like, I want to make this like a purely crocheted tutorial. And so I scoured Pinterest for an equivalent lace pattern, like a crochet lace pattern. And I found a video that like showcased a really pretty similar, like not exact, but it's a pretty similar um, lacy pattern, but it was crocheted. And so I like linked it in the description box and I credited the original pattern maker for the lace. Um, I thought it was just like the most wonderful little trim detail that I added. I was really proud of myself. That was my first like attempt at doing lace crochet, crochet lace. Um, but I also did it with like a DK yarn, so it wasn't like as lacy as possible, but I think I recreated it pretty well in all honesty. I think I went into one of my favorite yarn stores back in Seattle when I was still living there and um, the ladies like all <laughs> The ladies at the yarn store started crowding me when I was wearing this top and they were like, oh my gosh They were like I've been looking for a good like updated more modernized granny square pattern and a granny square top like where did you get that and i was like i made it oh my god i was so happy like i have a very distinct memory of impressing the ladies at the yarn store and, and then everybody like crowded around the table and everybody got my youtube handle so if they're watching hello <laughs> I miss you guys. I've been trying to find a good yarn store out here in Chicago, but I really miss those ladies. <laughs> I also like have to mention that I also did not know what the back of this top, like the original top looked like when I was recreating it. And <laughs> because of that, I was like, oh my God, there's fruits on this top. I'm gonna use a fruity little stitch. And so I ended up using the lemon peel stitch. And I thought I was absolutely hilarious for that. Please laugh. <laughs> Okay, this next top was directly inspired by the fact that I kept seeing backless tops all over my feed on TikTok. But like, I honestly just like didn't really want to buy a top that was like 100% polyester, you know. And I was like, you know, it's coming into the warmer months and I was learning a little bit more about fiber composition myself when designing garments and whatnot. And so this is a 100% cotton yarn. I wore it so often <laughs> during the during the summer in Seattle and 
it was really awesome and my other you know favorite thing about this top is that it was directly inspired by a lot of the backless tops that i've been seeing all over my page and i also created it to be backless ah <laughs> but mine has like a little button detail down here and i again really like utilizing like reversible designs when i am constructing and creating a pattern and creating a garment i styled this backwards and i was wearing my twice merch shirt that i got um and it was very inspired by a fit that nyan wore as well as you can tell like i am such a girl group stan i can't help it it comes out in every facet of my life honestly <laughs> but yeah i absolutely love this top it was so perfect for the summer the backless part is like such a great detail like i just think it's so feminine so beautiful and then it also allows it so that you can wear it in reverse and then you can pair it under or like you can layer it over like a really pretty corset or like a pretty shirt like a graphic tee i think um and i think that the button back and the little bow detail that i've got back here really helps accentuate you know whatever you're lay layering underneath it so yeah i can't wait to break this back out for the spring summer here it's just a little bit a little bit too cold <laughs> okay this top yet again another k-pop recreation but to be fair this one was requested by somebody who dm'd me and i thought it was a fun little project because like it's a mesh sweater which is like really versatile surprisingly enough because i feel like in the winter you can actually layer it up so it's not that bad um and then it like it's a stylish little layering piece but then in the summer it's mesh so it's not very hot and also like i made it with a cotton yarn so again not very hot um so it was really nice but my thing my stipulation when i am recreating a garment i always try to like give it a little twist so that it's kind of unique to me and like my design and so like and so you can see that in a lot of my different designs and my tutorials like with the nylon shirt like mine has a corset back detail instead of the buttons um with the momo shirt like hers was knitted mine's crocheted and then with the jenny crochet top like that crochet trim you know that was my idea because the original top was knitted and for this one the original top is actually called i think 78th street from jaded london and multiple different k-pop stars like wore this shirt i think primarily i saw it on mina and i think winter from espa and um it had 78 like written across on the chest and i was like Ugh. 78 doesn't mean anything to me and so i decided that my little twist on it would be instead to put 19. 19 is just because that is my birth date in january so yeah i wanted to make it a little bit unique and special to me and then in that tutorial i also tried to put like alpha patterns like grids um detailing how you can make all the different numbers i did if i'm like confessing something i kind of like guess I did my best guess at it. I didn't actually go through and make every single number. Um, I'm really sorry about that. But I was like, I feel like this should get you started. Like you can edit it, you know, accordingly. But like it should get you kind of started. You know what I mean? So I'm really sorry if like you were watching that tutorial and then you were trying to follow those alpha patterns and then you were like, this doesn't make sense. I'm really sorry. I'm very sorry about that, but you know, 19. <laughs> okay, this is exactly what I wore to Pride this past year. And I got so many compliments on it because like, I don't know if you can see. So this yarn specifically is like a rainbow sequin yarn. And so when the sunlight hits, like, boom so sparkly so pretty you just can't really see it when it's like overcast and there's no light on it but i swear it sparkles it shines it's so pretty i wore it out and i got so many compliments on her i also <laughs> i had only had like the one little ball of sequin yarn that i got and i was like what the heck am i gonna do with this one singular ball of yarn so what i ended up doing was creating a rectangular panel and then just like 
making little chains to tighten it up in the back and around the neck and whatnot and i honestly it's so fun it's very it's like very siren core <laughs> very like mermaid core you know and then like i feel like this would be the perfect little layering piece for like a rave or something i am not i'm not a raver no shame to ravers but i'm not a raver so I don't really have many places to wear this outside of pride in all honesty, but yeah. I don't know if you can tell because it kind of just comes off like a silver on camera, but I swear it's rainbow sequins. All the colors are present. I made sure. <laughs> this was such a fun fit and it was really nice because it was really hot during pride too. So like cool little layering piece that was really eye catching, but not very hot. <laughs> Okay, I know that the off-the-shoulder sweater is one of my favorite pieces. However, this one I think is really like, she's up there. She is really competing with the off-the-shoulder sweater. And I specifically made it so that the fit of it would allow for this like keyhole design um, so that, you know, we have this little bit of separation showing a little bit of skin. I had at one point like stopped before i added the straps and it was just like a strapless like corset bustier whatever sort of deal and honestly looking back at photos that i took of it when it was just like strapless it's so pretty and i think i want to make another version that is strapless i also asked a bunch of you guys as i was making it your opinions on the ruffling like if i should keep the ruffling or not and it was very like very split and honestly i think that i really want to create like a sleek dark version of this top using a black yarn and also maybe like doing away with some of the ruffling and maybe finding like little buttons that are a little bit you know more in theme aesthetically a little bit darker honestly i was so proud of this design i think it fits so well i've been complimented on it so many times like legitimately our like apartment community manager or whatever she saw me in this top and she was like oh, i thought that you had bought that from free people she was like i swear i've seen a top that looks just like that at free people and i was like nope i made it <laughs> this was also kind of like the project that i was working on while we were moving cross country um it definitely takes a while just because the suzette stitch really does work up pretty slowly but i didn't really get a lot of projects done back in july because that was when we were notified that we were going to be moving and we were going to be relocating and because of that july was like so much just packing and getting stuff you know all together and ready to go this was the project that i worked on on like the plane some really good memories and associations with this top it really reminds me of that really chaotic hectic time when i was moving cross country and i really love it okay this one is technically not mine it was a gift i made for my boyfriend which is why it is very large i was really 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 excited about this project because it was a granny square project and i used the continuous join as you go method oh my god that was life-saving life-saving like genuinely one of my favorite methods and i really actually kind of want to create like matching sets for me and our dog i think that would be so stinking cute and i also added this like really pretty ribbing i was really happy about this one i was really proud of this one even though it wasn't for me but i stole it because we share a closet so <laughs> now we are getting into our more halloween spooky designs and arguably halloween is one of my favorite holidays so like i made a couple different ideas for it this one i thought was much more of like a you know like a standard sweater like she looks pretty simple pretty basic from the front but the back look at that back oh my gosh it's a spider web okay and here's my other thing i feel like when i'm designing a top and i have like a very specific detail in mind that i really want to like revolve the whole garment around like for this one i knew that i wanted to do a backless spiderweb moment and then i was like again scouring pinterest for different crochet stitches and i found this spider stitch and i was like ah i'm a genius <laughs> that is so perfect to incorporate into this top and so i used the spider stitch for the whole top which honestly works up really slowly and i honestly saw somebody do instead 
um, panels using a central knitting machine so it went by a lot faster and like I that was so smart that was so smart but for me I commit to the bit I really <laughs> as you can see with like Jenny's like fruit crochet top like I did a lemon peel stitch back in the in the back because like lemons fruits things like that spider web spider stitch you get it you get it <laughs> These are just like the little design details and the technical details that I think literally nobody else cares about but like I think it's fun and I, I really like it and honestly like that I think is kind of becomes one of my it's like becoming like one of my little like I don't know trademarks in some of my designs where I definitely try to be a little punny with like the specific stitch type that I use and like whatever the detail or the design is so yeah there are some adjustments that i feel like i could make like for instance i feel like the neckline isn't perfect honestly i think it slips and slides around a lot it's like not wide enough to be like properly off shoulder but it's like not small enough that it's just like hanging really nicely and yeah so definitely some lessons learned you know i feel like everything is always like kind of a work in progress I think too like that's one of the things why I do free tutorials online and I post videos of it instead where it's like more like me showing you how I designed it and like what stitches I use and things like that. Um, none of my patterns and designs are like perfect they haven't been like thoroughly tested and all of that but also like it's free it's accessible you know you can take that base design and create whatever you want with your own creativity and your own time for me I just like if I have that really like initial inspiration I'm like I need to go I need to do this I need to make this and now so yeah that's what I did with this sweater okay so this one is a two-piece set it's a top and bottom matching flower slash hearts <laughs> um crocheted set this was very heavily requested by my twice girlies um twice wore like a bunch of crochet fits i think in london during their tour and i got a lot of requests to recreate some of those looks and so i took that opportunity to recreate the flower look that nyan had on um because it was like a matching top and bottom set because this was kind of doubled as my Halloween costume this past year. Basically, I was the flower and I made Teddy a little bumblebee costume. So he was a little bumblebee. And then my boyfriend was the gardener. When I was in line waiting for a bar, um, there was another girl in a group ahead of me and she was dressed up as, I think, Raven from, I don't know if that's her name. I can't remember but it was I'm gonna edit a picture in of the character that she was from from what Teen Titans or something it was a really popular costume this year I saw a lot of it but she like she saw me and she was like oh my gosh can I ask what you are like what are you and your boyfriend and I was like oh I'm the flower and he's the gardener and she was like oh my gosh you look so good and she was complimenting me on my crochet she was like oh my gosh that is amazing I love that you did that and then she was like I also sewed my Halloween costume and I was like oh my god it looks so good so we got to like bond in the bar line <laughs> over our handmade costumes so that was really fun yeah. so now we are nearing the end of the year and i have a couple of my last few items on right now i did a couple videos where i was doing more like smaller gifts so they're not like full blown out garments and in doing so i created a bunch of little hair accessories i made a bunch of bows i made roses as well i made these like little roses little hair accessories and like i have a bow in my hair right now and i also created i was just like really in the bow mood honestly it started off from this initial bow hair accessory and then i developed this bow off the shoulder top and then I created a bow shaped purse with an adjustable strap. Let me not forget that because it's my favorite freaking part about this purse. It has a 100% crocheted adjustable strap so you don't need to get like a separate hardware or anything for it. It's just adjustable. 
and isn't that so nifty <gasps> i also made a version in red and i know that i previously said like i don't really like doing repeats of my designs but the reason why i created this one in red is because i was actually in the middle of developing a dress pattern like continuing this top as a dress and i think i still am i just needed to like kind of take a break on it honestly and like simmer on the idea a little bit but honestly loved the red version i wore the red version out to a holiday party but the original version in white is so precious i love her also i wanted to correct something um i don't know if people are gonna see this but whatever i put it out there on my channel but i actually in this tutorial talked about how i created a pearl button back and I ended up actually removing all of the pearl buttons and just doing a slip stitch seam to connect the back on the off the shoulder panel. Um, just because I figured after wearing it multiple times that like it's elastic enough to the point where like you don't really need this button back in order to get into it. But then also the button back was just like a little wonky honestly. And so I ended up altering it by slip stitch seaming the panel together so i hope that if you watch this if you're creating this top you know you you don't have to do the button back please don't do it like <laughs> learn from my mistakes please but yeah that was all i made this year i was really proud to see like my progress throughout the year and like how i think a lot of my designs started getting better and better and better and honestly i i'm just really proud of myself and like i'm also so thankful for this crochet community that i have found online you guys really brighten my day i absolutely adore it when you guys recreate my tutorials i feel so blessed so honored that you would spend that time with me and you know spend your own money and time recreating one of my designs. I, it just makes me feel so happy. It makes me feel so proud. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you guys, honestly. I really hope that you guys are spending the holidays with loved ones. I am kind of hoping to push out another video before the end of the year, but honestly, I have no idea. But if this is the last video, I will see you next year. And if not, I will see you next time. Thank you again so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you guys want me to work on in the next year. What kind of crochet projects and wearables do you guys want me to figure out the designs and patterns for? Um, let me know your requests. Let me know what K-pop girly I should recreate. I already got a request that was asking me to recreate Irene from the Chill Kill trailer, like her red top that she was creating. And I actually, hold on, hold on, I gotta go get the photo card. I actually pulled her photo card. Oh my God, look how pretty she is. I pulled her photo card so I know the exact top that you guys were requesting. So I think that this is definitely going to be one of my, one of my first 2024 projects. Keep an eye out on that. Isn't she so pretty? Oh my god, I love my girlies. <laughs> but anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!